Emergency workers in Japan are still trying to cool the crippled nuclear power plant at Fukushima. At one point, smoke and steam were billowing from one of the damaged reactors, and that put a temporary halt to the efforts. The Australian uranium industry is watching the scene from afar. We're the world's third largest exporter of uranium, with annual earnings of more than a billion dollars. Events in Japan are hammering stock prices, but the industry argues it's the victim of unfair stereotypes, as Mike Sexton reports. At Olympic Dam in South Australia's outback lies the largest known uranium deposit anywhere on Earth. Exported yellow cake from this mine and two others earns more than $1 billion per year and supplies almost 20% of the world's nuclear power plants. The Tokyo Electric Power Company buy and burn Australian uranium. Both BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto sell significant amounts of Australian uranium to Japan. And Olympic Dam has certainly directly sold uranium to TEPCO in the past. We believe both these multinational mining companies should have to take responsibility for the nuclear impacts that come through the use of their uranium. The power plant at Fukushima remains in crisis. Despite more than a week of frantic efforts to cool the plant, smoke has again been seen coming from one of the reactors. I think inevitably it will lead to another wave of regulatory change in the, in the uranium sector in just the same way as the Gulf of Mexico has in the Piper Alpha uh, situation in the North Sea. And that's not a bad thing. Although the emergency at Fukushima cast a long shadow over a uranium industry conference in Adelaide this week, the mood remained bullish. It's a speed bump rather than uh, end of the show. South Australia is the nation's biggest exporter and a planned expansion at Olympic Dam is critical to the state's future finances. So the Mineral Resources Minister wasn't backing away from the industry. Probably the third worst earthquake in recorded human history. Tsunami. How many deaths related to exposure to radiation? None. I think we need some sober reflection on the hysteria around the nuclear accident in Japan. The minister went further, arguing against Labor Party policy by suggesting Australia should consider enriching uranium, the next stage of the process that converts raw uranium into a fuel ready for power plants. I think we've got to start looking at uranium exports and whether we can value add here and get our maximum bang for our buck for our resources here in South Australia. Yeah, our cheese exports are a far higher value than our uranium sales in calendar 2010. Perhaps uranium will catch up with cheese, but why would we take the risks we've seen in Japan just to suit the profit margins of multinational mining companies? Since the Liberal government lifted the ban on uranium mining, Western Australia has emerged as the new big player, with more than 30 deposits identified and millions being spent on exploration. There is no question that, that world demand for energy is going to grow dramatically. Uh, as the Chinese government uh, works on its processes of giving its citizens a chance to have a reasonable standard of living. That growth in China and other developing countries had boosted the price of uranium, triggering a surge of Australian prospecting. But after the tsunami hit, the spot price dropped more than 20% and stocks fell further. We've lost probably 50% of our uh, price in the last week, but... Uh, the price for a uranium stock is not necessarily related at the moment to its long-term commercial uh, future. Russell Bluck plans to begin mining uranium near Wyala by the end of next year. He says when emotions pass, the long-term reality is that existing nuclear plants still need fuel and new plants are being built. The price that uh, most people focus on is the spot price. The spot price reacts to market uh, stock markets, to emotion, uh, to all sorts of other things. The long-term contract price is driven by the real demand of real reactors. Many of these small wannabe companies are never going to get into production. They shouldn't have a social licence to operate when the use of their uranium can lead to the nuclear disasters that we've seen in Japan. Reports from Japan suggest it could be weeks or months before the power plant emergency is over. And the industry acknowledges the events have set back their image gains of recent years. But the South Australian Minerals Minister, at least, is urging them to continue preaching the gospel of uranium. And I think it's important that you, as leaders in this industry and field, step up to the plate, step up and argue the safety of nuclear reactors, argue 
that it is a sustainable energy source, that it is the way of the future. Mike Sexton there.